Today we're going to be talking about some of the worst habits that wide receivers can fall into with their route running. So we're going to be showing a bad example of that specific bad habit that wide receivers love to do that I cannot stand. And then we're going to show a correct example of a good route from a wide receiver executing the skill perfectly and how you guys can apply this to your game. So the first example is going to be wide receivers raising up their pad level before they have to drop their hips on a route. So like I said, we're going to show the bad example first and then a good example right after. So right before the break point, this wide receiver, he is going to be running this like stop route. Some people refer to it as a hinge route, but it's essentially where you go up 12 yards, you just put the brakes on and then you stop. So all the way up to that 12 yard point, what are we trying to make this DB think that we are running? We are trying to make him think that we are running a fade. We are running deep. And how we have to do that is we have to make sure that we're running fast, we're running in full stride and we maintain good body language. Now, body language is one of the biggest mistakes or one of the most challenging things I should say that wide receivers try to perfect at the top of the route. Because again, a disciplined DB is going to be watching what on us. He's going to be watching my hips. So if my body language gives away the route, that is the easiest way for, get, for him to sit on this route. So right before the break point, because he's so concerned and because he wants to drop his hips, he raises up his chest. You see how his pad level, he's got this slight forward lean. It's almost like he is pulling a sled, but right before the break point, he starts to raise that chest up and raise his chin up in the air. When your chest pops up and your chin pops up, your hips also pop up. And when a DB sees your hips start to rise, he is going to sit, he is going to stay in phase, and he is going to break on this thing just as fast as we will because we are giving it away. Now, why do wide receivers do this? Because it might seem pretty self-explanatory, like, oh, well, going up into the break, yeah, I know I want to keep a good body language. Why would anybody ever raise up? And it's usually because they were trying to get this explosive drop of their hips. Let me explain. So going into the break point, like we talked about, what is every wide receiver trying to sell? Whether it's a five-yard hitch, whether it's a 15-yard hinge, whether it's a 12-yard stop, whatever the case may be, you were trying to make him think we're going fade. So we have to make sure that we are running somewhat hard. But when you're running hard and at the break point, you have a slow drop of your hips, you're going to spend way too much time at the break and the DB is going to be able to react. So we have to snap down, which is essentially this explosive level change or this explosive drop of the center of your gravity. So wide receivers will raise up with their chest and raise up with their chest so they can create more momentum, throttle down. You see how his outside hand kind of swings down, but it actually does the opposite. It lets this DB know a break is coming. So we're going to play this again full speed one more time. This is something that all wide receivers want to avoid. Can't stand it when wide receivers do this at the top of the break because it just gives away the route. So now we're going to look at a positive example here of a wide receiver dropping his hips on an out route. But again, just because the route differs does not mean that the technique differs or the technique at the break point differs. Now, before we show this, fellas, if you're a wide receiver, and you would like to train with us this off season, check out that very first link in the description below where you can get access to signing up to one of our 14 remaining off season training camps. Guys, we're coming out to 13 more states this year. So check out that very first link in the description below. All the information is there, what we'll be doing at the camps, how you can sign up for it and what to expect. Our next camp is going to be in Las Vegas, Nevada. That camp is completely sold out. And then Charlotte, North Carolina, that camp is also sold out. But then we'll be heading out to Portland, Dallas, Nashville, Chicago, Buffalo, Atlanta, Houston, Philly, Detroit, Boise, and Los Angeles. So guys, if you're local to one of these cities, we would love to have you out. So check out that very first link in the description below. Let's get back to this good example of pad level at the top of the route. So this route here is from Jameer Calvin. He is going to be running this out route, slipping under a DB, using this throw by move and being able to create separation. So again, the routes may differ, but the break and the technique always stays the same. So watch how he's leading up into this. How this route goes, you have an outside shade DB who's sitting right at about five to seven yards and you got to run like a five to seven yard out route, right? So leading up to the break point, we're obviously not going to go attack the DB. We're not going to try to square him up because when he's outside leverage, his goal is to protect the outside. Don't give up the outside route. So the second he sees you try to run to the outside, he is going to move. So if he's sitting right at the break point, we got to pick a shoulder and we got to attack. So he attacks his outside shoulder and outside hip. And the goal is to self-fade. We want to make him think that we are going deep, just like that hinge route or that stop route in the last example. So it's all the same. Our goal is to get him to flip the hips and break on a dime. But pay attention to his pad level. His hips and his shoulder level stay the exact same, exact same. Bam. He trusts the the hips and he trusts the cut to be the thing that slows him down. If I can give you guys one piece of advice, don't change your upper half. Trust your legs, trust your hips, and trust your feet. That will get you out of the break much more explosively and you will be able to sell this thing as long as possible. So let's play this again full speed one more time. 
And so guys, two keys, two coaching keys, because I'm not just going to tell you, hey, keep a good pad level. Here's an example of it. What can you think about when you're running routes to perfect this pad level position? I tell my wide receivers, act like we said it briefly in the last clip, act like you're pulling a sled. I'm sure all of you have seen athletes train with like a weighted sled where they are running. They're not leaning back, right? They got a slight forward lean, right? That slight forward lean is what helps them pull the sled. So that's what we want going up to the break point. Another thing I'll tell my wide receivers to do is keep your chin down and your chest slightly, and I say this sparingly, slightly ahead of your waist. Because when your chin is down and your chest is forward, you're not going to raise up, or at least you'll feel the raise up a little bit more. But this usually happens when wide receivers go to drop their hips. So let's play at full speed one more time. Great job by Calvin selling vertical and creating separation on that out. Okay, so now, second thing that I cannot stand when wide receivers do this is forcing routes into the leverage of a DB or forcing an inside release just because it's an inside breaking route, regardless of where the DB is lined up. So let's watch this full speed. So this wide receiver is running a 10-yard in. Travis Hunter is playing DB right here. Now, in the next example of this, the correct way to run this route, we're going to be showing Travis Hunter on offense running the same route versus the same press look. And again, this is why I think it's important to play both sides of the ball because you have a better understanding understanding of what's going to work against disciplined DBs, not DBs who are scrubs. I'm talking about disciplined DBs. So let's play this full speed, then we'll break it down. So obviously pre-snap, DB has inside shade right? DB is inside shade for a reason, guys. Whenever whenever it comes to picking my releases, whenever it comes to structuring my routes, we're looking for two specific things. One, how far is the DB from me? Whether he's two to three off, five yard off, right up on the line, and his leverage. That tells me everything I need to know pre-snap. Now, could he change it up post-snap? Absolutely. But pre-snap, we know that he's inside shade. That means he does not want to give up the inside release. So as a wide receiver, my goal is to be able to keep spacing on my route concept and to be able to keep timing with my quarterback. I don't want my quarterback sitting there waiting for me, waiting for me, waiting for me. And I also don't want my route to cut across the middle of the field running into other receivers. Guys, this is not one-on-ones. This clip is from one-on-ones, but guys, you have to treat one-on-ones like an actual game scenario. So let's say, for example, we had a dig route from the outside. This is this wide receiver. And then my slot also had to run a dig at like eight. And this one was at 10. If you got a DB who's inside shade and you force that inside release and he reroutes you and you run that dig and you're right on top of the slot, that's horrible spacing and one defender could guard two routes. And that's what this receiver does. He gives him a little move to the outside. Okay, fine. And DB is taught not to bite on that. He wants you to run to the outside because that's where the sideline is and that's where his help is. He's taught to protect his leverage, stay patient, get hands, force you to the inside. We cannot get stemmed all the way to the inside like this, guys, as there are other receivers on the field. Everybody always uses the excuse like, oh, well, there's going to be a safety over there, so it won't work. There's going to be linebackers over there. Against man-to-man coverage, there may not be a safety. There may not be linebackers sitting in zone like everybody says. However, there are other receivers on the field. And if we are running into those other receivers and the spacing is off, that is on us. So what should this receiver have done? He should have taken what the DB gives him. He should have given him a move inside. He should have threatened his leverage because you see how much Travis Hunter moves with his feet as soon as this receiver tries to run to the inside. We want to fake like I'm doing that. Get him to move off that platform and take the outside release. Because now I'm not running into this hand contact. And the whole reason a DB gets hands is to disrupt the, disrupt the timing with the quarterback. But if I attack, if I move him off platform inside, I swat his hand, I take the outside release. Suddenly he's not jamming me anymore. Suddenly I'm off the ball and I'm getting up into my route. And again, I'm staying on the path of the route. I'm keeping spacing on the play. Now, top of the break is where a lot of people panic. But we're going to talk about that with the Travis Hunter example. So Guys, don't just because it's an inside breaking route, don't force the release. Take what the DB gives you, set him up, and take what he gives you. Because when you force it, he gets hands, he reroutes, and the play is off. So, now, similar concept here DB's inside shade, Travis Hunter's running a dig. So, watch what he does. Tax him inside, outside release. He's able to stack him, run over the top of him, and have plenty of space on the route. Could the quarterback have thrown this sooner? Absolutely could have. But at least he gave him space to operate and spacing on the play. So now, obviously, Travis Hunter's a freak athlete. Very, very fast. It's easy for us to say, oh, well, yeah, of course. He's going to attack him inside, get the DB to move. And then when he runs to the outside, because he's so fast, he's able to stack him and run this route. Stacking is when we get this DB trailing my back hip. That's what you want to try to do against any press coverage situation, regardless of your route, regardless of the release, regardless of his leverage. You want to try to always stack when we get press coverage. If the route is deeper than five yards, I would say, and it's not a route like a curl or a comeback. Now, 
And what if this DB is faster than us? What if this DB is right here, right on my hip? What could I do? You could take your inside arm, you put it on the back of his shoulder, the back of his hip, you slip under and use something called a throw-by move. And that throw-by move gives you plenty of space on the play. Again, a quarterback would rather have a slightly slower break than for you to get rerouted all the way across the field. So this is a textbook routed from Hunter. This is a great job taking what the DB gives, not forcing an inside release when you have an inside breaking route versus inside shade press. Okay, so now another common mistake that a lot of wide receivers will do, this is when you release away from a DB's leverage, is that they will not get skinny, especially on outside breaking routes. Remember, we just got done talking about spacing on routes. Spacing also applies when you have a route that is away from the DB's leverage because we never want to run to the DB's help any sooner than I need to. And so when a DB is inside shade press, where is his help? His help is the sideline. If you are running and you break your route off and you have one step to the sideline, two yards to the sideline, you're not doing your quarterback any favor. That's a bad route. So let's watch what Garrett Wilson does here. So he attacks DB inside, but he takes this outside release, but you see how wide his stem is. Like everybody will say, oh, well, like this ball was thrown late. This ball was thrown behind. The quarterback is expecting us to break at a certain spot. And if we cut off my route and take too wide of an angle, he's, we're not giving him enough room and we are disrupting the timing of the play. Let me explain, right? So the quarterback is expecting us, like when a play is drawn up on paper, right? Let's just say a basic play drawn on paper and this wide receiver is running a 10-yard out route, right? The On paper, it is a straight shot breaking at 10 and he's got all this space to the sideline. That is where the quarterback is anticipating us to be and that is where he expects me to be. Now, when I have inside shade press coverage, my goal is to move him off the platform and I want to get hip to hip with him so I can get to that spot the quarterback expects me to break at and he can anticipate the throw. He can lead me. So watch what Wilson does. I mean, he gives a good move and Garrett Wilson is probably my favorite route runner in the NFL. So this is just a good example for you guys to understand. But again, I'm sure he's doing just fine. And I guarantee you this is the same type of conversation that they were having in the Jets receiver room. I 100% guarantee it. So he gives a move to the inside, takes this outside release, but you see how wide he is going, right? So again, that's right where the DB wants us to go. And when we go wide, we get to the 10-yard mark where I'm supposed to make this break a little bit sooner, a little bit wider than the quarterback expects me to. So he probably throws this on time, but because we don't give him that much room, and now we got a DB right on my hip, that is a very, very easy play for him and a very, very tough throw for the QB. So guys, we have to get skinny. I give him this move to the inside, now, some of you might be thinking, well, coach, what if he gets hands? What if, I, what if I'm trying to stack, trying to get skinny, whatever, but he's physical and he tries to get hands? Your mindset off the line, fellas, when it comes to hand technique, pick an arm to beat. So we got an inside shade coverage DB. What release are we taking, regardless if it's an inside breaking route or an outside breaking route? We're taking an outside release because that's what he's giving me. So your mindset should be, oh, I'm not going to battle him if he two-hand jams. I'm not going to sit there and swat, dip my shoulder. My mindset is I am just going to beat this outside arm. This hand does absolutely nothing. Yeah, it could recover. Yeah, it could get hands on you, but it doesn't prevent you from releasing. This is the hand that prevents you from releasing. So he gives him a move to the inside. Our mindset should just be, okay, I'm going to swat this hand. I'm going to take my hip and go right past his hip and get as skinny as possible to where maybe I stack him, like we said, or he's right next to me. I could lean into him and give my quarterback room. But when we run away, we are cutting down the field space and we are screwing up the timing of the play. We cannot run away from the press. Let's not run away from the contact. So let's watch what Dotson does here on this same 10-yard out route. Now, he's got a little bit different of a look. He's got a DB who's off, maybe about, like, I would say, what, one, two, three and a half yards away, almost four yards away. So he decides to go with a different type of release. It's called a dive release, where you fake like you're trying to cross his face. You slip back to the outside. But I want you to pay attention to how skinny he gets here. So he dives to the inside, but look at how skinny he gets. He gets right back into that DB's cushion and gives the quarterback room. So let's talk about it, right? So he gives this move to the inside, bam, slips to the outside. But you see how tight he is running to him. He does not go wide. He does not go wide, then vertical, because he wants to give the quarterback as much room as possible. And guys, if this DB's right on your hip, and let's say he's getting physical, that's a good thing. Because you know what you could do at the top of the route is you could lean into him. You could take your right shoulder, your right hip, your right elbow, and lean and put all of your body weight into him. And it's almost like a way to push off without actually pushing off. And that is one of the best ways to get separation with an outside release versus inside shade press. So he breaks it off. But again, you give the quarterback room to throw you open. That's where we need to be. Look where he started his route, right? He started the route on the hash. He does this dive release, but where does he end up breaking? He ends up breaking 
right on the hash. While as in the last example, right? Let's go back to where, let's go back to the last example. He starts the route here, like two yards, I'd say from the top of the numbers. And where does he end up breaking this thing? Like probably three yards towards the bottom of the numbers. So his route was starting point here, this. The, first, the second example, starting point was here, gave a move inside, but he still broke in a straight line. Guys, that's the difference. We have to make sure that we are getting skinny on my routes to give the quarterback space to keep timing and also for him to be able to lead us open.